Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Welcome to another edition of Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. This week's guest is one of my very favorite Portland people, Betsy Richter from RPDX. Oh, how nice. What a lovely thing. Do you say this to all the guests? No, I say something different to each of the guests, but that's completely true about you. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. So why don't you tell us all what you're here to talk about and where you can find it? Well, our PDX is our PDX Networks. We launched about two months ago, maybe three. You can find us at ourpdx.net. And a couple of other URLs will also point to that place because I couldn't quite make up my main mind on the domain <laughs> front. So there's like six or seven incarnations that will all point back while we figure the name thing out. So it happened pretty quickly. It did. It was one of those situations where um, I woke up on a Saturday morning and said, you know, I really want to blog locally again. And I had this little bee in my bonnet because somebody had dropped a story in my email box in the middle of the night, and I had no place to post it. Hmm. So I said, you know, maybe I want to create a local blog. Let me see what I can do about putting a skeleton together. And our PDX has very much been from the beginning about the friends and family plan. Mm -hmm. So I flipped a couple of emails over to friends and said, what would you think if I put this local blog together? Would you be interested? And the emails started piling in. So people were like, yes, why don't you do this? Let's try that. And by the end of the weekend, I had a WordPress skeleton up Mm -hmm. and three or four domain names bought (laughs) and two or three authors who said, would love to come join you. Mm -hmm. And so the thought at the time was, okay, we don't have to do anything right away. Let's just do the stealth mode. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe if we really can pull it together, we can get something ready for... um, gosh, what was it? Ignite, which was Thursday night, Mm -hmm. to start putting the little teaser out about it. But there was no rush, no deadline, no nothing. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately for us, um, one of our authors had posted a link in his post (laughs) back to Jack Bogdansky. Jack Bogdansky, Bojack, if you don't know him, Mm -hmm. reads his referrer logs like nobody's business. (laughs) And he digs stuff out. And so... It was Wednesday. It was five days after we sort of put this skeleton together. I had no logo. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, you know, content coming soon on half the pages. I Mm -hmm. had authors who had started writing stuff. And I'm in this all-day meeting at work. And I check my email at noon, my personal email. And it's like, oh, my God, Bojack's linked to us. (laughs) And all of this traffic is now coming in to the site. And we had no idea. We, and I guess we were open for business after all. Mm-hmm. So that's when I started really moving to high gear and said, well, if we're going to launch this, we might as well figure it out and get it out the door now. And so we went from an idea on a Saturday morning to a live site the following Sunday night, eight days later. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah so. so if I were go to rpdx.net mm-hmm. mm-hmm. right now, yes. what would I find? You would find... I want to say we have 13 authors writing for us now. Mm -hmm. There are people from all walks of life, all perspectives, different areas of the city. And I don't tell them what to write about. The only thing that I say, my basic three criteria for authors are you have to write about Portland. You have to be able to tie what you're writing about to Portland in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. The second thing is you have to be interesting. You have to be somebody that we want to hear from. Mm -hmm. And then the third is... I don't, I don't want to say controversy, but you have to, it can't just be a, I went to this restaurant, it was good, and I liked it a lot, you should go too. It's it gotta rains be in some, Portland. Yeah. 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 No, the weather stuff, uh, Yeah. It, it, there's a way to do a decent post about the weather, and there's a way to have it be, it's really hot today. Mm-hmm. And we want somebody who can take it and spin it, relate it to what's happening in their life, um, and just, you know, make it, make it something I want to read. You want it to to not just be a Portland blog, but you want it to reflect how Portland affects people Mm -hmm. personally. Yeah, and it's a real cross-section of Portlanders. I mean, I've got um, one of two of my authors. um, One works in downtown Portland at night 
in a convenience store. And so he gets this picture mm-hmm. of all walks mm-hmm. of life coming in. Mm-hmm. And he writes from, from that perspective. Another, one of our newer authors is a musician, is an artist, does a lot of things in Portland, is a relatively new person to the city. Mm-hmm. But he works late nights in a porn store. Mm-hmm. And the stories that he has are just I've amazing. I've read some of his books. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but then we've also got, you know, the people who work in downtown offices who talk about the interesting things they've had for lunch. And then you've got, um, I mean, it's just this really mi- great mix of people. And some of them have been Portland residents and, and Oregon residents forever, like Media Chick, our newest in, in our author. And the studio great. audience. She's in the evening. studio audience this <laughs> evening. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Had this great post about what being an Oregonian, what a Portlander means to her. And she pulled in all this great history. And it's like, that's the kind of stuff that I may not have been interested in it before, mm-hmm. but she brings this perspective and this voice to it that makes me want to read it. So that's what we want at the end of the day. Other thing that I was really, really proud of that started from the very beginning with our PDX is that we wanted the people who are reading us to talk to us. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to really engage people in conversation and dialogue. And we do it through our comments. We do it through conversations on Twitter that feed back into the blog. I really wanted this to be as transparent and as two-way and engaging as is possible. Because it's not so much about what we have to say it's about what you have to say in reaction to us Mm -hmm. and it's also about pointing to the great things that other portland blogs are doing and other people in the pdx you know realm are doing as Mm -hmm. well so it's not just us telling you it's us celebrating who you know what you're doing over there or calling out the portland pie off which was an amazing event the pie off was pie off was great yeah and i say that not only because you know just because my daughter (laughs) you know, took one of the blue ribbons. But it was this great event where it started with three people having a conversation over Twitter. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe we should bake pies. Maybe we should get together and try the pies. And it blew up into this thing that had 125 people there and mm-hmm. 49 pies. It was amazing. It, it was, was really great. There were a ton of people, and everyone yeah. was so excited to be there. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. kind of seems to be the same way it is with the author's yeah, on your blog. Everyone seems to be very excited to be there, to be writing, and to have something to say. Right. Well, I think one of the things that I've said from the very beginning is that I don't want this to feel like it's a job. I don't want you to feel like there's a quota. I am very, very, very aware that everybody who's contributing to RPDX is doing so for free. Mm-hmm. And I'm grateful for their efforts and their energies and their involvement. And it's it's been very much a let's go in the barn and put on a show Mm -hmm. and yes I may be funding it I may be um, developing and I may be sort of managing it but I'm constantly looking for feedback every step of the way and I don't want anybody to ever feel like I'm telling them to do something or I'm telling you to write Mm -hmm. this many ways or that way or I mean I'll come in and do clean up for grammar if you've misspelled a word I'm going to come in and fix it Mm -hmm. but I'm not going to edit your posts I'm not going to tell you what to write I'm not going to tell you to write five times a week I just want you to show up and have something interesting to say at the end of the day so and so far they have had interesting things to say yes yes so um so about how many writers do you have on there I know we we asked that question about oh I may not have answered it um 13 or 14 now we keep adding oh wow that's big it's big and it's the interesting thing about it is that um if I had to use a couple of words to describe what our PDX is about, it's very much the friends and family plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I first went, the first author that I pulled in was Diesel Boy from Met Blogs. Who, Hi, Diesel Boy. Hey, I think he's up in Seattle watching the, the Yankees. He but is, yeah. I saw his tweets earlier yes, today. Yes, yes. But Diesel Boy had been my co-captain at Portland Met Blogs. Mm-hmm. And when I left Met Blogs and took a break from doing local blogging, the first person that I wanted to bounce something off of was was Diesel Boy to say, mm-hmm. what do you think of this idea? And he was the first person to really come on board and I'd be really enthusiastic about what we wanted to do with our PDX. But then I turned around and started talking to people that I knew in my life to say, what do you think of this idea? Mm-hmm. And what was really interesting is that they really validated it. They said, could I come too? <laughs> could I be part of this too? And so the authors writing for our PDX are people that 
are related to me in some way, shape, or form. The first batch is like people that I may have dated before, people that I might have worked with before, people that I have some degree of uh, people that I, who wrote for Matt Blogs before. Mm-hmm. And they were all really, really gracious about wanting to come in and be a part of this. Um, I've been able to tap on friends and friends to do things like develop the um, banner for the site. The header is beautiful. The header is beautiful. It's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah. And, it really is. And that was, you know, I went back to Aaron Hockley and said, mm-hmm. Aaron, I love your photographs. I don't have any money. I could pay you. Could I license these for a while? And then I am a Photoshop retard. I'm spending a weekend <laughs> trying to put a banner together. And I dropped a frustrating email to a friend of mine who said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know this guy, Guilty Carnivore. He'd be more than happy to put a photo montage together. So I tossed him Aaron's photos. Mm-hmm. And he put together this great photo montage for us. And, you know, it really has been the graciousness of friends and people who said, hey, let me help you out here. That's it. So, yeah. Big reflection of Portland. It is. And, and as far as the the technology behind it, you um, you've been pretty much putting together the the WordPress yeah. side of it. And the cool thing is, as soon as I went to rpdx.net mm-hmm. on my iPhone, I noticed <laughs> yeah. this there's a special yes. iPhone interface. I am I am by no means a technologist, but I'm very dangerous when it comes to technology. And I find these cool little shiny things on the side of the road, and I want to figure out how to make it work. Mm-hmm. That is a WordPress plugin that's specifically made to have your uh, um, the site as viewed on an iPhone look in a way that works on an iPhone. Is it just for the iPhone or is it's it just a mobile for the iPhone? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's for iPhone and the iPod Touch. And the the other thing I noticed mm-hmm. is um, the second time I went to leave a comment in the iPhone interface, it had remembered all yeah. my um, Open ID information. Yeah. So it was yeah. just like really. I mean, it was that easy once I got on there and right. got authenticated. And, it was and like I would like to say simple. it's because I'm a brilliant technologist. The reality is that I found <laughs> some stuff that worked. The other really cool thing is that when the site was first built, it was slow as hell. Um, and another friend jumped in and said, Jason Grigsby, who many people know from Baron Blog, who's talked about doing site optimization, who's, said... Whose birthday it is today? Uh, he's 40 years old today. Jason ha- Grigsby 40 is 40 birthday. years old. Happy birthday, Jason. <laughs> Yeah, oh, the yeah. cup of noodle at, yeah, at Ignite. Yeah, he did. He yeah. was at Ignite. He was the cup noodle guy. Yeah. Um, he volunteered to come in and do site optimization for our PDX. And he says, he's looking at me saying, 30 plugins? Do you really need 30 <laughs> plugins? Probably <laughs> don't. I probably need to start turning some of them off. But mm-hmm. again, it's just people who know more than I do about stuff who come in and help make it work. You know just enough to be dangerous? Oh, in many ways. Yeah. About many things. <laughs> <laughs> so... so. So let's talk about how you got into blogging and how you ended up blogging in Portland, uh, Oregon. Um, I have been in interactive and online media for a very long time now. Um, started off working in traditional media, um, was working in New York City. Traditional uh, media like print, just magazine? Print, print, magazines, print. Started working for like my hometown newspaper. Oh, where when, was that? In uh, Michigan, Rochester, Michigan, the oh. Rochester Clarion. It was a little weekly. It's long since dead. Um, moved to Ann Arbor, worked for the Ann Arbor Observer, went to New York City, took a big leap, and actually started working for the Village Voice. Oh. And oh. my first job in the online world was to, as the first online services manager at the Village Voice. And this was back in the early 90s. And there was these little BBSs out there, and there was this thing called the Internet. And it was before the World the Wide Internet. Web. I know, I know. I've heard of these BBSs. Yeah, and Mm. I said to my boss at the time, who was the president and publisher of the Village Voice, I said, David, you're making all your money from classified advertising. What's happening on the internet will eat your lunch. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be smart about... Let me introduce you to this guy named Craig. (laughs) Yeah, he now knows about Craig really, really well. This was before (laughs) Craig's list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you said Craig, I was like, why are we talking about Toon Lit? Oh, (laughs) this, yeah. And and I would like (laughs) to say, you know, that I I knew, I I I did know what I was talking about. And there were a few people who realized in, you know, the early 90s to mid 90s that, you know, there's something happening here. There's a bit of a revolution happening. And maybe we got to figure out how to 
move online. So that's what I did for The Voice for a couple of years. And, and so then New York was just a little too boring for you, oh. so you needed to come to Portland. <laughs> I loved New York. Um, was married in New York, had my first son in New York, have a lot of friends in New York. I keep in touch with them all online. Um, I'm still active in a bulletin board system in New York uh, called Echo. It's the East Coast equivalent to the Well in California. Yeah. Um, if you were to believe the Wall Street Journal, I practically gave birth to my first child online. <laughs> I'm immortalized in a cartoon, being dragged away from my keyboard, telling my husband, oh, don't worry, honey, we have plenty of time. The contractions are only five minutes apart. <laughs> now, where was this? This in was in New York. It was in the Wall Street Journal. In the Wall Street Journal? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, wow. inter- they interviewed me when I was working for The Voice, talking about women online. Yeah, yeah, and what women were doing. All online. two of you. All at the two time. of us at the time, <laughs> right? Um, now there's five women online. Right. No, 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 no. Now there's plenty, <laughs> many, <laughs> many women. It's much better, thank God. If you can believe what mm. they actually say, I mean, that you know, 25 year old woman in that chat room may in fact be a 50 year old guy. Mm-hmm. Y- yeah, yeah. But, uh, or a 14 year old <laughs> boy. Yeah, looking to get you know. There's a, but there's thrilled. a lot more women involved True. online than there was when I used, was on the mm-hmm. BBSs back in yep. the day, and you'd, yep. you'd have a woman log into your system, and you go, oh, an actual woman. Yeah, <laughs> wow, that's I, great, I was know? that woman on that system yeah. back in the early yeah. 90s, it was um, just, you know. because I was doing this, you know, investigating this professionally, but it also turned into a personal obsession, and so I may be looking at this during the day, but at night, on my own computer, I'm on these bulletin board systems, and I actually met the man that I later married online. Oh, you shouldn't do that. I know. <laughs> uh, believe me, my family was horrified. Um, I grew up in Michigan. I'm now in New York. I am dating this guy. The first way that my family met my ex-husband was by watching us being interviewed on CNN for a Valentine's Day special. Wow. And they edited the segment so that it looked like I was just this... The, it was along the lines of, I met him... And two weeks later, I moved in. And that's really, Mom, not the way it went down, but that's how they met their future son-in-law. Was I met him, and then right. I moved in. So, yeah. Well, I just think with, um, you know, uh, the in the early days of online, there wasn't much diversity. Right. There's a lot more diversity now. Blogging has helped yeah. in a great way. Right blogging, just everyone being able to easily express themselves online. Right. So it's really drawn to the diversity. I think when yeah. I when I came to Portland, and I'm going to, f- sorry, I got sidetracked on the Village of Wista. Um, I came to Portland actually 12 years ago as Oregon Live's first editor-in-chief. And I really believed in the medium and I wanted to make web content, online content, much more accessible and intriguing and inviting. And I have gone on on RPDX about Oregon Live, um, I know there's been a lot of controversy and conversation about Oregon Live and the relationship with the Oregonian. I don't want to derail the conversation here. Um, after I left Oregon Live, I still wanted to be involved in having the conversation with people. And that's when I got involved with blogging, gosh, eight years ago? No, four years ago, sorry. What was the first blog? The first one that I did is the one that I still have. It's My Women's Law. Mm-hmm. Uh, started How many that years? In, uh, in 2004 is when I started wow. it. Yeah. Um, I now operate, oh, I can't even begin to tell you how many blogs, um, a lot. Uh, I've done, uh, My Women's Law is mm-hmm. the one, my personal blog. Um, I am managing a blog for my 10-year-old daughter. I am managing a um, online publishing system for an organization I'm involved with. Mm-hmm. I'm running my daughter's elementary school site, which mm-hmm. is on a WordPress multi-user We're up to setup. Four. I'm working to get all of the teachers online with their own configuration. So that's however that's many teachers you can keep rolling from there. Five that. times yeah. infinity. <laughs> I've contributed for um, or uh, met blogs. Mm-hmm. I've contributed for. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the blog. It was a mom blog, a national mom blog that I was working for at a time for a while. I also did some divorce content for a while. I had a second blog. There's the fish one. Yeah, yeah, one fish, two kids. Yeah. And I was licensing content from that to an operation called Divorce 360. And they were paying me to write for them. Oh and my goodness, the, money. Yeah, and I turned it down after a while. I wrote yeah. like three or four months worth of posts. And what was happening is they were pulling my content in. And it was Jerry Springer for angry divorced people. Oh. And... 
my ex and I have a very kind of cordial relationship, mm-hmm. and my stuff was boring, and I didn't want to go back and make create conflict yeah. to be interesting to these angry divorced people. So I walked away from that gig. The blog's still out there. I'm just not writing you. on it. So, 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 um, so now mm-hmm. we have the proliferation yeah. of blogging. Too much. Too, Too much. Yes. So. You know, my now kids pe- are killing me. They're like, "Mom, not another damn blog." Now people yeah. are talking about uh, our blogs dead. In fact, we actually did have that question directly out of the chat room. Uh-huh. Um, I think they're evolving. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you're finding. I mean, it's the same. Would you say that email is dead? I think that. Oh God, I hope so. Yeah, Doctor Normal I thinks that email too. is on his last leg. And I if I could just get everything in my 140 characters, I'd yeah, be but I think really happy. The, there was a post that I did last night. Um, that I think perfectly describes the sort of symbiotic relationship that email and blogs and Twitter can have. And that's that Rick Tarosky did the post about, or blogs, yesterday. I went out to dinner. I'm exchanging email with people about what's happening with or blogs. I'm on Twitter converse, conversing with people about or blogs. There's all this stuff happening about mm-hmm. it. And then I went home and consolidated it all together in a post on a blog. So you can still have the conversations but they need to feed into something where you can actually see it. Because Twitter streams go away over time. Or the email doesn't get aggregated and consolidated. So I think there's a there's still a place for blogs. So not as many. So blogs blogs are the um, kind of the, the, the point of, of record, right? And, yeah. and 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 things like Twitter streams and conversations mm-hmm. and other things are, are feeding into that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean the the running joke that I've had, both of my children were okay at first with the notion that I was blogging about them. And then my daughter came back and got really angry at me and said, you cannot blog about me without asking for permission first. And I have to approve. How old was she when she said that? Um, seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter did it at yeah. five. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and at one point I remember joking in a post about her that I'm writing this because her future prom date would be Googling this 15 years from mm-hmm. now and needed to know what he was up against. Mm-hmm. And that's a joke on one level. On the other hand, it's it's very realistic. That's and it's very not real. a joke. Yeah. I know. No, I, know. <laughs> I know. And so I've had the, the updated two th- 21st century lecture with your kid about stranger danger. Mm-hmm. With my daughter, when we went to the pie off, it was, if you talk to anybody who feels like they know you and you're uncomfortable with that or talk too much about your life, come find me and talk to me. Mm-hmm. And so we've had these conversations for the last three or four years about, you know, when people walk up and, and start talking about you. Interestingly enough, I've never used my daughter's name before mm-hmm. until the pie off. Yeah. Because she wanted to be known as Zoe Richter, the kid who won the ribbon. Yeah. Um, but I will continue to have conversations with her about what this means and what it's like sort of living and hanging out there. So When we were at Ignite... Mm-hmm. I was upstairs in the balcony, and Dr. Normal was downstairs with our daughter when you came in. Mm-hmm. And you walked up to our daughter and said hello to her. I did. And I I, I know that you immediately explained to her, mm-hmm. oh, I know your mommy and your yeah. daddy, and it's okay. But she did bring it up later. She was like, um, who is the lady that was talking to me and said she know you knows you and I said, uh-huh. no okay mommy really does know that crazy lady yes and she's a very nice person <laughs> yeah crazy crazy is it, it it's kind of scary i mean are there i mean both of you mm-hmm. being bloggers and moms um it, are there any you know is is there something out there that's going on like with i mean i hate to say standards or you know standards and practices or something but is there a conversation especially among the plentiful mom bloggers out there yeah. about how you deal with this. I know I've seen conversations back and forth like with Cami Chaos, with other friends who are mom bloggers, but is there kind of a consensus going no, on? There's no consensus. Well, first of all, I when, think it's whenever anarchy. you talk to mommy bloggers... There's a big difference between a mother who blogs yeah. and a mommy blogger, and right. I think that it's really hard to make that distinction sometimes. I mean, I will personally go on record, and I know I'm going to alienate a bunch of people. I find the term mommy blogging really I, I just thinking i, I yeah. made a big faux pas there right I, and it, it, well no there are no, some fine. there are some women that identify themselves as a mommy blogger and what right. they do and they t- they write about their kids and they write about 
happenings and things for, in the family, and that's why I asked. For example, right. there was a woman that we once had on the show, Lindy, who started her blog as a mommy blog because she started her blog to update her family who lived far away about her daughter. Right. It later grew into something else. She was no longer a mommy blogger. She became a blogger in her own right. But it started out with her happily and honestly being a blog just about her children, right. just about her daughter. And that's what a mommy blogger is. A mommy blogger is someone who's blogging about their children. I have a cousin who has a blog, and it's just a way to update her friends and family sure. about all her kids. Although it has turned into a business. You have a yes, certain level of mommy bloggers who understand that they are writing for an audience. Correct. And would like to receive some compensation Correct. for writing for that audience. And so there's been a lot of conversation and a lot of, you know, can I talk about this product and not mention the fact that I just got it from the manufacturer for free in hopes that I would blog about it. Yeah. A lot of ethics and rules and regulations around that. So, What was your question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was more around about, you know, how much you reveal your family, your kids' names, your personal information. I've, more, not your personal information, but your kids' right. personal I'm information. Right. I'm much more concerned about my daughter's personal information than I am about my own. Mm-hmm. And any personal information information I seek to protect on the behalf of my family so I, I is think for it's, my kids. I think it's um, less, it, it, even less so, uh, certainly you got to protect yourself with, with, you know, stalkers and people like that right. out there. But I think it's it's even scarier in the marketing realm. Oh, I because agree. Because you, you mentioned the yeah. Googling your mm-hmm. daughter someday when they go out on a prom date. That, to me, is, is the reality is mm-hmm. that... You know, everybody who has a MySpace account, Facebook, you know, blogs, all this information's out there. I mean, to me, companies that gather marketing data are just laughing to the bank right now. Oh, yeah. Because people are putting that data out there and going, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, we know everything about this family. We know their demographic, what they're buying, what they're doing, you know. Um, the marketers and know. the government can find out right. anything now. The and clever use of social networking. And there are some bloggers who want to take full advantage of that or try to take full advantage of that who don't understand what they're going to pay either in the short term or the long term for this. It's like on my blog, everybody knows on the personal blog that I, A, used to like mojitos a lot and that's mm-hmm. where a lot of my inbound traffic <laughs> is coming from, from Google, and B, I cannot burp. And the cannot burp thing turned into a single post that I'd made as a joke in December of 06. And 250 comments later, with all of these people throughout the internet sharing their symptoms like, oh my God, I can't believe I found my people. (laughs) Um, I remember waking up one morning, a weekend morning, and I need to get these people off the blog and start a forum for them. Mm-hmm. And my son thought it was the lamest thing I had ever done in my life to create a forum for the non I I just wanted them to stop talking about their <laughs> symptoms on my blog. But I'm sure somebody has that stored in a database somewhere about mm-hmm. me. I still can't burp. Didn't find a cure. Be careful because, later. because last week someone told me they couldn't do something and I forced them to do it. So. I saw that and I can in <laughs> fact touch my shoulders. So. Yay! <laughs> the chat room wants to see it. Me touching my shoulders and the not burping. No. Not touching the shoulders. She's actively not burping right now. Yeah. See? I can touch my shoulders. See, Scott? <laughs> Take that, Kavita. Yeah. So. so, anything about else about rpdx.net that you've got coming up or Um, anything you want to talk about we are um, one of the sponsors of word camp camp. happening on september 27th i am helping to organize um word camp i am sponsoring word camp out of my own pocket we're paying for the the keg if i got to pick i wanted to pick the most popular thing and i was assuming it would be the keg well we'll have aaron hockley yeah. on the show to talk good. about word camp the week before good and i'm also speaking at word camp so i will be doing see a i need to go to word camp presentation on the eight days of rpdx creation and the friends and family program and all of the things we did to try to get it off the ground and then betsy so, said let there be blog let there be blog and it is and it is good yes Yes, most people are happy about it. My two children are not thrilled. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was lovely talking to you. Everybody should check out rpdx.net. 
Next week on Strange of Life, we'll be talking to Don Park. Good night, everybody. Good night, and thank you, Betsy. Thank you.